This is a color sensor shoe. And when I put my color sensor on, this color sensor will become much more accurate. I'm gonna explain what this is and why it works, but before I do that, like this video and subscribe to the channel. So the purpose of a color sensor shield is to isolate the light of the color sensor and keep the external light from affecting the light of the color sensor. So as you can see, what this color sensor shield does is it surrounds the sensor entirely. There's no gap on any side where light from the outside can get in. So one important thing to note here is that it's two blocks in height, and this allows me to have the color sensor located one block away from the ground. And so when this is placed down, the color sensor light is going to be coming from the topmost area here, while this area here is going to remain empty. And most LEGO color sensors, including the Spike LEGO sensor, perform best when they are one block away from the ground. And if they're too close, then you get varying values, and if they're too far, then your color sensor becomes inaccurate. So by keeping the color sensor away one block, by securing it to a color sensor shield, you are already increasing your accuracy and consistency of your color sensor. And so that brings me to the main benefits of having a color sensor shield. And the primary benefit is that you're going to get greater accuracy. By preventing any local variations in light affect the color that the color sensor reads, you are allowing yourself to have consistent readings throughout the entire map. And so as you can see, no external light is able to enter the area where the light source is going to be shining. So if you have this color sensor located on top of the line, the only thing that it's going to be seeing is the light that is reflected from the line underneath. And that's going to remain the same throughout the entire map. And so suppose there's a lot of light in the area where you start your program, but not a lot of light in the area where you finish your program. Then by putting a color sensor shield, you can guarantee that you're going to get the same readings at the start of your program and at the end of your program. And similarly, this color sensor shield will also allow you to have increased consistency. And that consistency comes between your practice and your competition. So many times I've seen robotics go to a competition and fail because there's too much light or there's too little light and their program is unable to accommodate for that. So by putting a color sensor shield, you're basically allowing your robot to have the same color sensor values when you're at practice and when you're at the competition. So you don't need to adjust your program or recalibrate your sensor in order to see the same results and same accuracy that you see in practice. And the end result of this is going to be that you're going to see better line falling and better color detection. And this is especially important if you're doing FLL or WRO or any other type of competitive robotics. And so this shield is constructed with two layers and I primarily use the T as well as a 2x4 and 3x5L in all training layers and I filled in the gap with two pieces like these shown over here. And I've attached the color sensor by attaching it to an H beam and then attaching that to a 5 beam that's situated on top of this color sensor shield. And if you want the link to build this color sensor shield right here, you can see it in the description below at my website roboticsfusion.org. If you have any questions, leave a comment and don't forget to like and subscribe.